So in this video, we want to cover where are we in time, who are the players at the end time, and what is coming. And we want to use the Bible to interpret itself. Now, starting in Daniel 2, there are four kingdoms that are talked about. Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and Rome. Now, these kingdoms have already fallen. At the end time, there will be four other kingdoms that rise up that will represent these four kingdoms. And that is covered in Daniel 7. So we're going to begin with Daniel 7. We'll start here in Daniel 7, the first, uh, Daniel 7 verse 3. The four great beasts from the sea are diverse from one another. So we're talking about the four beasts. Let's discuss those. The first one is the lion. Who is playing the role of the lion? That is Britain. Britain has the symbol of the lion. There you go. All right. And had eagle's wings and beheld to the wings thereof were plucked. And it really is describing America because see, this is the symbol for America is the eagle's wings. All right. The next beast, the second beast is likened to a bear. It's raised up on one side, has three ribs in its mouth. Now, that is Russia, and we're going to see this. This is the uh, coat of arms for uh, Leningrad. This is the actual coat of arms for Russia. And right over here, you can see that there's bears in these symbols right here and down in these symbols. I'm going to show you that up close. You see the bears. And so it is the symbol, it's always been the symbol for Russia. And so it's one of those four nations or four kingdoms that rise at the end time. And we don't have any trouble seeing that. After these shall rise another nation inferior to thee. That's just talking in Daniel 2. And this was Daniel actually explaining to Nebuchadnezzar that the, after his kingdom would be another kingdom that would come up. And that would be the kingdom we called the Medo-Persian Empire. So that was the one that would come up, the second one that would come up. And it says it was likened to a bear. So now look where it says it is raised up on one side. This is really, I feel, China and Russia because it's got to be two nations together in a league. We know the bear is Russia. We know China it's in close alignment with Russia and raised up on one side. One side is stronger than the other. I think that's talking about China being stronger than Russia. And now we want to talk about the third kingdom. And then it says the third kingdom that comes up is brass. That was in Daniel 2, which shall bear rule over the whole earth. So it's going to be a world ruling government at that point in history, the next empire to rise up after the Mede-Persian Empire was Greece. And so this was the empire of Alexander the Great. We're very familiar. So that's the third kingdom. So there's going to be another kingdom that plays the role of Greece at the end time. And that's what we're being told. Daniel 7 verse 6. After this, I beheld and lo, another like a leopard which had been upon the back of four wings of a fowl. So it's telling you that it basically takes on the symbol of the leopard. Well, we know that Europe's one of the major symbols for many of the coat of arms in Europe has been the uh, leopard. I mean, it, and so that ties right back and identifies Greece. It also ties right back and identifies some of the European countries. But it is, is it talking about the European countries here? Because it says it has to be a world ruling government, right? So if we look at that, the leopard is a European symbol and it's pointing to Greece. And Greece takes on the role of the United Nations. And you can actually see this is the symbol for Greece. It, uh, it's really an olive branch. It's in the form of a wreath. And you also see the same thing that's in the symbol for the UN. So very interesting because the UN is a world ruling government. So both Greece, which was Alexander the Great, and the United Nations have the same symbol. Okay. So 
now you're beginning to see the, the major players on the, on the stage right now. You see America and Britain. You see Russia and China. And you see the UN. And so that's also associated with the EU because, you know, the United Nations actually came out of Europe. So that you can begin to see that he's identifying certain nations and certain people at the end time. And he's trying to show you who these people are using the symbols that, that we know represent these countries. Okay, so the UN is a world ruling government, like we said, and it will play this role of the, of the leopard. Okay, so now who, who does the Bible say Greece is at the end time? Because it actually does tell you. Now, you have to go to Daniel chapter 11, and we're going to read this. And Daniel 11 verse shall stand up three kings in Persia. Now, we know Persia is Iran. They admit that they are the Persians. They, their name actually used to be Persia before World War I. And it says there's going to be other nations with it. This is other Middle Eastern nations. And the fourth one is far richer than them all. That's Saudi Arabia. So it's not hard to see that that is being fulfilled and has been fulfilled for a long time. And by his strength, though through his riches, he stirs up against the realm of Grisha. Now, the realm of Grisha is, the father's going to explain to you who that is, because who was the nations that went against the Middle East in the last 20 years, because we've had wars all the, for the last 20 years, we've had wars in the Middle East, and it started with the uh, first President Bush, and he was the one that, that started what we call Desert Storm. This, most people don't realize, because they think these, these wars that have been going on in the Middle East are just with America, but they're not. It's a, a conglomerate of all the nations coming together. Now let's read this under the UN Security Council Resolution 678, a coalition of, of 35 nations led by America fought Iraq in the Gulf War from 1990 to 1991. And that was just the beginning. And so when you go and read that chapter, it's really talking about the war that has been going on now since the 1990s that's gone on and on in the Middle East, on and off with these same nations we've talked about here, Iran, Iraq, many of the others and in, in, in the Middle East. And so this is what we're seeing taking place. Most, for the most part, it's been England, France, and America that have fought most of these wars. But it's all associated with the UN. When you look at it, it these are UN battles. And so it's identifying here who the UN is and who is Greece in scripture. And now going on, the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron as much as it breaks into pieces and subdues all things. Now, Daniel 7, verse 7, and this I saw in the night vision, behold, there was four beasts, the fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, strong exceedingly, and had great iron teeth. And it devoured and break into pieces and stamped the residue with its feet and was diverse from all the other beasts that were before it. And it had 10 horns. Okay, so who is that? And that's, we're going to find out that that's Rome. Rome was the one that had the iron teeth. She persecuted the saints. She was the only major nation or kingdom that persecuted the saints. And it talks about the 10 horns here. So who are these 10 horns? And that's what we're going to cover next because they play a major role. So we have to go to Revelation 17, verse 9, and it explains it. And there is the mind which has wisdom, the four heads or seven mountains, which the woman sits on. Okay, so the seven mountains are going to be seven governments. And let's see that, see that revealed here. Revelation 17, verse 10. And there was seven kings, you see, these are the seven heads, the seven heads or the seven kings. Five have fallen, one is, which was Rome. So the five had fallen, that would make 
Rome, the sixth empire that would come up. Okay, now going on in the same verse, and the others are yet to come. So we've had five that have fallen. This one is, which is the sixth one, and it says there's the others are yet to come. And when it comes, and this is when John was writing, he's, he was under the Roman Empire at that time. And when it, it comes, it shall continue for a short space. I think that this is the kingdom that's already arose. I think that's socialism. You see it in every major nation now that they are all under the socialist agenda. They, they have shifted their governments. They're pushing in what we call socialism and climate change and the liberal agenda. So this is the short piece that, that's going to be talked about here, which is socialism that everybody's under. It is the fourth beast. But look, it's one more beast coming. And so Revelation 17, verse 11, and the beast that, that, that was and is not even is the eighth. So that's, the, that's going to be the beast that's talked about as the beast that rules over the, the world government. And it is of the seventh. It is of socialism. And it goes into perdition, which so... Many people like to deny that there is going to be a major player in time, but the book of Daniel calls him the little horn, and he's talked about in Daniel 8. So going on, the 10 kings, let's identify who these 10 kings are. Revelation 17, verse 12, and the, and the 10 horns which thou saw are 10 kings, which have no kingdom as of yet. They don't have a kingdom. They don't own land. They don't rule over countries but they're still considered kings so who in the world could this be that doesn't have a country that that's a king and that uh, doesn't have a country that they rule over but they receive power as kings one hour with the beast a short span of time these 10 kings have power so who are they and scripture tells you revelations 18 verse 22 we're going to break down into the middle of this statement here and it says for thy merchants or the great men of the earth do you see that your merchants and so that is the ceos of the companies you see this going on with facebook with twitter with all the social media tools and you also see these major companies now really having a lot of power to push in the eng uh, and the reset, financial reset, and also climate change. And, you, and this is very interesting because Isaiah 23 tells you the same thing. So who has taken the, this council against Tyre, the crown city, which is probably New York City, whose merchants are princes, whose traffickers, traffickers is another name for merchants, are the honorable men of the earth. So it's really telling you the people that are renowned in the world right now, the CEOs in these companies, and it says the mer these merchants are the great men of the earth. These are the CEOs, and these are the men that is talked about that has a short time frame, a very short time frame, but in that short time frame, they're going to do some damage, and that's what we want to talk about next. Now, Revelation 17, verse 16, and the ten horns, which are the CEOs, which thou sawest upon the beast, they hated the whore, and that is the Christian nations, Israel, and shall make her desolate, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. So they're going to destroy the Christian nations. And that is the European nations, that is Britain, that is the Scandinavian nations, Australia, New Zealand, parts of South Africa, you know, America and Canada. These are the nations of Israel today because they are the Christian nations. The Father identifies his people in Galatians 3, verse 29, as the people who believe in the Messiah. Those are the people that he says are his people. And you can read that in Galatians 3, verse 29. So it's the nations, the Christian nations now, that are the ones that are playing this role of Israel. And they get burned up and destroyed by the CEOs. And we can see that happening. And, we're, and you see it happening right now with the gas shortage. And there's about to be a food shortage also. So going on, 
The CEOs destroy America with climate change. And that is the gas uh, situation, the gas shortage right now. We can actually see it. And I just want to prove to you who that she is Israel, that the harlot is Israel. So let's go through this. Jeremiah 3, verse 6. Has thou seen that which the backsliding Israel has done? She has gone up into every high mountain, that's government, and under every green tree, and has played the harlot. So Israel is being compared to the harlot. She is the woman that rides the beast. The beast are all these nations that have come and gone through history. And so they've, they've rose and they've fallen and rose and fallen. But now we're to the stage where we're in this, the seventh kingdom, which is socialism. And it's going to be lasting for a very short time, we're told. And it says the Christian nations are playing the role of Israel. And they are the people that are taken down. Okay, so going on, the 10 kings, which are the CEOs, also called the horns, which shall be the 10 kings, which we just mentioned, which have no kingdom. They don't have a government or land they rule over. They receive power with the king for one hour, actually kings. This is our presidents, prime ministers. They have a short span of time, but they're working with the government. And with the beast, which is, is the liberal leaders. Okay, so this is all easy to see at this point. And so their policies are going to stop the gas production. And the stopping the usage of fertilizer will lead to a food shortage and inflation. So this is where we are. This is what we see happening. And so where is this in prophecy? Revelation 6, verse 5. And when he opened the third seal, I beheld a black horse. Now that is one of the horses that are riding in Revelation 6. And he had a pair of balances in his hand. So anytime they mention balances in scripture, that deals with money and exchange and borrowing. All right. So it says a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny. This has to do with the financial system, which we know this is specifically talking about leading to inflation. And so this is exactly what we're talking about here. We're in, we're in a recession. We have unbelievable prices at the uh, grocery stores and in the marketplace. And so these are the two verses that we can see now that are being fulfilled. One is the third seal and now the fourth seal. Now, fourth seal, verse seven, and when he opened the fourth seal, the power was given over a fourth part of the earth. Now, it just happens that the Christian nations make up a fourth of the earth. And so these are the Christian nations that it's zeroing in on. To kill with the sword, that's war. With hunger, that's the food shortage. With death, which is the pestilence, which we just had with the COVID recently. And with the beast of the field, that's the evil people in your land. You see these children out in the streets now protesting and destroying the cities so this is a country that we live in that's divided and when it talks about a war one of the things that it's mentioning here is in ezekiel 38 verse 21 i will call for a sword against him throughout all his mountains that's his governments so all the the christian nations you will see that there's every man's sword shall be against his brother that is what we see going on there's a, this fight that's going on a split in the country between the liberals and the conservatives and that's the fight that's going on that is the war between the two brothers now going on amos 7 verse 8 it talks about this then said the lord behold i will set a plumb line in the midst of my people and so the plumb line is a division in your land but it also is going to be a division in the world so this is, this is what you can see coming, and scripture talks about this, that there's going to be a split between the Western world and the Eastern world. And so let's see this in scripture, Jeremiah 9, verse 25, behold, the day comes, said the Lord, that I will punish all of them which are circumcised, that's the Christian nations, they're circumcised, with the uncircumcised, that is the Gentile nations, which do not believe in the Messiah. 
Then verse 26 mentions all the different types of nations that come up. And it says they come up from the utter corners of the world and that dwell in the wilderness. And then it also says, for all these nations are uncircumcised. That means they're Gentile nations. And the house of Israel, which is the Christian nations, are uncircumcised in their form. Now, this is representing Jacob. The west part of the world is representing Jacob. And the east part of the world is representing Esau. And this is talked about in scripture because Esau was promised by his father that you will serve your brother, but you will throw your yoke off at some point and you're going to actually take power over your brother. And this is what we see coming. In Romans 11, verse 25, we read the last part of this that says, blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. So the fullness of the Gentiles is what we see happening now. The eastern part of the world is beginning to rise up and they're beginning to have a power and wealth. And so there's much more to cover. There will be a war with America and that's a, a, another video for another day. And so what the father's interested in really, he's not interested in bringing all this destruction and war. He's just interested in one thing and that's the people repenting. And so, you know, many people don't see these things and this is where we are now.